Hey folks, this is Andy Harrington here. Thank you so much for joining me for this web class presentation, which as you can see is entitled, how do you design and deliver a presentation that provides incredible value and wins clients without ever having to be salesy? We're gonna get started pretty much straight away. I know from the registrations that we have people watching and listening in from all over the UK and all over Europe. So welcome wherever you are from. Hope you're having a good day so far today. And let's get started pretty much straight away. So hang tight, wait about 10 seconds, we'll get started. Do make notes as we go through, it is gonna be well worth it. So hang tight, let's get started. It's gonna be pretty fast paced because I've got a lot to fit in, but you're gonna love it, so hang tight. All right, I've pressed my various buttons here, so let's get started on this web class. How do you design and deliver a presentation that provides incredible value and wins clients without ever having to be too salesy? Let's start with the question. Question is, what business are we all in? Have a think about that for a minute. What business are we all in? That's a really important question for you to know because we are all in the same business. No matter what you sell or who you sell or serve, here's the reality. We are all in the business of change. That has to be true because ultimately, whatever service you provide or a product even you provide, but most people, it's typically a service, that service is designed to help the client to facilitate a change in some way, shape or form. They wanna overcome a problem, they wanna have a change in their life, their body, their relationships, or whatever area you are wanting to provide change in. Now, here's the problem with this, because, look, if it's a service, the client has to change something about themselves, and they don't typically want to make a change. Most clients are more afraid of change than they are of keeping their original problem which now actually gives us a problem if we're putting together a presentation where they need to purchase our service and of course then facilitate a change. So I wanna look about how we go about doing this. Now, I want you to think about this concept of the sweet spot. The sweet spot is a very important thing. Your presentation should be designed in such a way that it moves the client into what I call the sweet spot, which is the easiest place that they would then want to buy once they're in the sweet spot. Now, I'll come back to the sweet spot in a second and explain what that is. But to begin with, in your audience, whether that's a online audience or an in-person audience, whether it's a few people, one people, or 5,000, 10,000 people, in that audience, every single person has a split personality. There's basically two versions of themselves right in front of you. There is, number one, there is the current version of themselves which is the one that's pretty, you know, feeling stuck, doesn't feel like that they can solve their problem. And you have the future version of themselves. This is the one that ultimately they see themselves in the future becoming. Now, here's the thing. In order for you to move the client into that sweet spot, here's what the sweet spot represents. The sweet spot represents a moment in time where the prospect thinks, I believe... I can achieve the version of myself I want to be, but I urgently need their help. In new case, your help. So it's a place where they believe that they can achieve what they want to achieve, but they think they need your help to achieve it. Does that make sense? Now, when you're in that place and you therefore make an offer, and ultimately that offer is one that is good value, then they are ultimately definitely 100% going to buy from you. However, most people do not know how to put a presentation together that actually moves people into the sweet spot. Because when the client is sitting there over in the current version of themselves, and by the way, while they're on the while they're listening to your presentation, they're going to toggle back and forward between the current and the future version of themselves. But when they are psychologically sitting inside the mindset of the current version of themselves, here's what they believe. They think, I just don't believe I can achieve it. I will waste my money. So in essence, they don't think they can achieve it. It's too hard. It will take too long. I'm not good enough. You know, I'm, you know, there are other people further advanced than me already. I'm nobody special. You know, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. So they've got all these negative beliefs that ultimately prevent them from ultimately moving into that sweet spot where they believe that, I, that they can achieve the result they want, the version of themselves they want to be, 
but they urge to need your help. So they're not there yet. So let's say they're sitting round about there right now, as in they are not in the sweet spot. They still are very much believing that they can't achieve it. They'll waste their money. The question is, how do you move them into the sweet spot? Well, you've got to build into your presentation certain types of content that encourage the client and build their belief. But at the same time, also has elements built within your presentation where they you, you mention the pain of staying still because you've got to use pain and gain to move them. So we build them up, but at the same time, we want to push them you know, by reminding them what the pain of standing still would actually or actually is costing them right now to be stuck in the current version of themselves. All right, so if we then do that, what will happen is those types of people in the audience will move into the sweet spot. Fantastic. Second thing we got to look at is what about when someone's actually the future version of themselves? Well, they believe I'm nearly there. I don't feel I need you. I'll keep my money. So this person's overconfident. They think they can handle it all without any training. They think they can just bluster their way through and get a result by trial and error which of course for most of us you know is going to be trial and terror, not trial and error. And so ultimately they will not buy because they don't think they need you. Does that make sense? So that's good that they are confident, but you and I both know if someone's overconfident, they'll often make huge mistakes and then they hit a roadblock and it's all too much for them. So how do we on our presentation address that type of psychology or that person in your audience. So here's what we have to do. If they're sitting right there, what we've got to do is challenge them and deposition them and also add the pain of missing out. So here's what's important here. So when I say challenge and deposition, what I actually mean here is we've, we've, we've got to challenge that belief that they can do it by themselves. We've got to use stories We've got to use content that shows them where the gaps are that might go, ah, oh, I didn't realize that. Ah, oh, I didn't know as much as I thought I'd do. This is where you've got to showcase your talent. You've got to make them feel a bit more inferior to you. Does that make sense? Such so they see you as a go-to authority because they think they might be an even more authority than you. So that's where you've got to really showcase. But also, you've got to add that pain of them missing out as well. So if we add that part into our presentation, we move that person into the sweet spot in our presentation too. Now, here's what's really interesting here. That if you have a presentation right now, you're probably just putting content together just to educate the client. That won't be enough. Education needs to be there because it, it's the draw that makes them want to watch the presentation in the first place. But what you must have the ability to do is to challenge and change how the audience is currently thinking. If you don't do that, that prospect will not become a client. Doesn't matter how good the offer is at the end, they just simply are not buying. Does that make sense? So the question becomes, how do you do it? How do you build a presentation that builds all of this in and does get the client to become uh, actually a client, a paying client of yours. All right, so here's how. We do it by implementing what I call the Jet Set Speaker System, and I'll be talking about that a lot more in this webinar right now. All right, so here's something to know and remember. A good presentation is science in its creation, but it's also art in its delivery. So the problem is presenters are often either the scientist or the artist, but rarely are they both. They either bore people with an overly structured presentation that doesn't allow freedom of expression, or they have almost no structure and leave the audience with no way of implementing the advice. Because typically they fail to realize one very important thing, and that, in essence, that even the most famous artists need a frame for their work. So in this presentation, I will seek to do three things that you should strive to do in your presentations. That is educate, engage, and also entertain. But also something else. And that is that your presentation must change thinking. That is the key. Your presentation must change thinking, as we discussed earlier. So I have now been doing that through my Jet Set Speaker system for over 18 years, from humble beginnings in small seminar rooms in London, where I really didn't know what I was doing. I had no concept of this sweet spot. I had no concept of how to change the way the audience thinks. 
I was just really kind of making it up as I was going along. But little by little, I got better and better. And I ultimately started to figure out by studying sciences like NLP, hypnosis, and uh, all sorts of mind management techniques, I kind of figured out my own little recipe. And that kind of made my my career rise, my star rise. And I got ultimately to present in giant arenas like the London, London O2 Arena that seats 16,000 people. And it also in international arenas all around the world too. And, you know, I, I got to share my message, got to share my stories, my anecdotes, and really help people to realize that they've got within them an incredible opportunity to really influence people. But at the same time, you also need to realize you need to make an income from that as well. So how do you do that in a presentation? That's what I've been teaching now for getting on for, well, actually well over 18 years. And during that period of time, I've also been very fortunate as well, because uh, I performed alongside other well-known authorities such as Tony Robbins. Like, I remember back in the day when I first went to see Tony Robbins, I took my partner with me. Uh, she was having some challenges personally at the time. And as luck would have it, Tony picked her out and worked with her one-on-one -on -one at the front of the room through a live intervention. And he literally changed her life. I mean, literally changed her life. And I remember thinking to myself at the time, wow, this is amazing. I want to better do something like what Tony Robbins is doing. I'd love to present on large stages. I'd never done it before, by the way. I just had this kind of weird dream that I could do it. But then his voice came in and said, look, Andy, don't be ridiculous. You can't be like Tony Robbins. I mean, look at him. I mean, look at him. And then look at you. <laughs> like his teeth are bigger than you. <laughs> and it's kind of weird, isn't it? That we all have some kind of hang up, don't we? That we believe we're, you know, we're not X enough or I'm too much of Y. And ultimately, we, we create some belief that says we, we can't step up. We, we have that fear of rejection, fear of failure. But I didn't listen. And ultimately, um, even though straight away I didn't do it, I went to another seminar with Tony Robbins about six months after that, because I didn't do anything with the, the first time around, I had the thought. Six months later, another seminar with Tony Robbins, and we went to pair up with a stranger and look directly into their eyes with all this love and uh, all this kind of positivity and be really present. And I'm, and I'm, I'm pretty much an introvert. And so I, I kind of sit this one out, you know, like everyone's pairing up, staring to each other's eyes, the lights dim down, the room is kind of like this zoned out place, there's some music playing. And that realise in this moment, as I'm sitting there without a partner, the only person left in the room that didn't have a partner, well, that was Tony Robbins. So um, I was in some kind of trance. I, I walked down the centre aisle from like row 22 and I got past these security guards, motioned to Mr. Robbins, would it be my partner? And to my complete surprise, he agreed. And I got to have around five minutes of very intimate experience with Tony Robbins as I stared into his eyes with such gratitude for what he'd done for me and my partner at the time and inspired us so much, you know, changed her life because, you know, she, he solved her problem for her. And it was like, wow. And I thought in that moment, I said, you know what, I'm going to do this. And I started crying. I was weeping and I'm crying. I just had this big release. But to my great surprise, you know, he was, he had a tear in his eye too. And it was like a magic moment. I think that's it. I'm going to do this. And I then continued. I went back, started building my career and ultimately worked my way up to get to speak alongside Tony Robbins. So it took me nearly 10 years to get good enough to present on giant stages with Tony Robbins. But I have now done that several times uh, in my career in several different international destinations. And I'm very, very grateful to have the chance to do that. And also alongside other greats like Steve Wozniak, you know, he's the guy that co-founded Apple uh, with Steve Jobs in that garage there. And also amazing people like Richard Branson, who I admire enormously. You can see me there on the stage, just about blurred out, about 5,000 people in London. There. But I also spoke alongside Richard in uh, Australia as well. And also two US presidents as well. And even though I'm right here in the UK. So I actually became known as the Jet Set Speaker. And what I do is I present using my Jet Set Speaker system. I'd make an offer for people to be trained and mentored by me. And literally, I was able to get people to stampede their way to the back of the room. We can see that here. There's huge numbers of people there signing up to my program. And you can see that there uh, on the screen. And look, everybody wanted to know my secret source. So I created something called the Public Speakers University. 
to train entrepreneurs, uh, coaches, consultants, you know, anyone who, who feels that a presentation to help them make sales would be useful. And then I handpicked the best people that attended my speakers university and I invited to join me at the Professional Speakers Academy, which I founded, which is a, a year-long mastermind program with me. And now I have helped countless coaches, consultants, trainers, and advisors literally to create an educational presentation that gets clients. Uh, people like Blake here, 50,000 in his first month. Fiona, 85,000 in the first three months. Matthew, over 100,000 in his first three months. Jesson, 1.3 million. Stephen, 1.5 million. Also, these guys became... Uh, winners of uh, an award at my Professional Speakers Academy. I'd love for you to come along uh, ultimately if you're good enough and win an award through me as well. What a great opportunity. That's great positioning too, isn't it? Here's my dentist, Manish. Uh, he went on to teach dentists how to run a better dental practice, got loads of international awards through doing it again through my international awards through the Professional Speakers Academy. Robert Rowley, also an award winner too, by the way, but now teaching investing across Europe, made over 5 million. Sally Lawson teaches agents her Rainmaker program, four and a half million she's made, and Nick's gone on to make 11 million, teaching experts how to build their empires. So look, there is a right way and there is a wrong way, uh, ultimately, of course, uh, to go about building these types of presentations. So let's start with the wrong way and then I'll give you some right way stuff as well. All right, so here we go. So mistake number one is not providing enough value. You can't just sell, sell, sell. There has to be value built into the presentation, not just pictures of your fantastic car and house. And you've seen presentations like that, I'm sure, but they've, I think they've had their day now. So, you know, your marketing, I mean, this effectively is marketing. All marketing should add value you before making an offer. Does that make sense? So now the mistake people make is that they, they sometimes then give too much value and they go too much into teaching. So you've got to find that right balance. There is a way of finding that right balance where people think, wow, this is absolutely amazing and I want more. Does that make sense? Because you want the audience wanting more because ultimately if they feel full up, they feel like got to digest what you've given them before they're ready to take on more. Does that make sense? So, you know, think of your favorite food, for example. No matter how much you love that favorite food, if you've eaten too much of it, you need a break to digest the, what you've already been given. And that's what often happens. People cram too much in and then they squeeze their audience out. So you've got to provide value. You've got to know what value to provide and what value not to provide. But definitely no pictures of cars, houses, etc. That's not really the game. All right, next, mistake number two, only engaging the logical brain and not using stories for the emotional brain. So I just told you a story a little while ago, my Tony Robbins sort of story where I began, if you like, to become a presenter in the first place. Now, that would have engaged the right-hand portion of your brain, which is the non-logical side. And that's where all of your emotion is, where all your decisions are driven from. So stories are very important, and you must learn to become an outstanding storyteller. More about that in a moment. Mistake number three, not transforming thinking and instead just teaching. So yes, you need some teaching to be there, of course, but what's more important is underneath the teaching is this transforming thinking. You've got, you can't just be a content speaker. You've got to be a motivational speaker. You've got to motivate people to ultimately break through the limitations they have. Look, everybody, think about it this way. Everybody that's in your audience, the reason they need you is because they're stuck. And the reason they're stuck is because of one of four reasons. And those four reasons are as follows. Number one, they are in a pattern of inaction inaction. So pattern number one is a pattern of inaction. Pattern number two is a pattern of reaction. That means they're still emotionally attached to the problem. Then you've got mistake number three, not mistake, so pattern number three, which is they're in a pattern of distraction, which means this person's fragmented all over the place. They're kind of avoiding doing what needs to be done. And finally, number four, is they're in a pattern of wrong action, which means this person, well, they want to solve the problem, but they're not being very strategic about it. They're just like a bull in a china shop, just trying everything and anything and not getting trained in advance or finding out a methodology that actually works, which is a trial and terror approach. So think about that. So a pattern of inaction, a pattern of reaction, a pattern of distraction, a pattern of wrong action. And so your presentation has to break one or more of those four patterns. Does that make sense? All right. 
Mistake number four is not having a solution framework that visually shows your audience your process for solving their problem. Now, this is super important because almost certainly right now you sell a service. That is you know, nearly 80% of businesses sell a service and not a product, especially if you're a small business, that's even more likely. So here's the problem. Remember, products let's say like an iPhone, well, they are easier to sell than services as they are visible and you can touch them, you can hold them and you can experience them. In fact, you can essentially try before you buy. But look, when you are selling a service, you are selling something invisible. In essence, you are essentially selling a promise to solve a problem. And the thing is, you can't see a promise. Does that make sense? So you must make the invisible become visible by creating what I call a unique branded solution. I'll tell you more about that in just a second. All right, mistake number five, looking and sounding incongruent due to poor presentation skills. So what does that word incongruent mean? Well, it means you're saying one thing, but your body language is saying something else. So this is super important, right? It's really important that you have fantastic presentation skills because people will judge you more by your body language and its congruency than they will the words that come out of your mouth. So now you know some of the biggest mistakes, I will now show you how to correct them. So introducing to you the Jet Set speaker system. So there are five major elements we must put our attention on. Number one is to learn how to instruct your audience. Now to do that, you're going to need a methodology. I'll come back to that in a second. You need a map, a recipe. You can't just have bullet points everywhere or random content. It's got to be in a cohesive system. More about that in a second. Next, impact. That's that presentation skills. You must impact people with your presentation skills. What you must be able to demonstrate is unbelievable certainty because your audience needs certainty. So if you aren't able to demonstrate congruency and certainty, they will pick that up unconsciously and they will not buy from you. Next, inspire. You must be able to move people emotionally and to do that, you're definitely going to have to become good at storytelling. So more about that in a second. And number four is you must give them some way to implement. You must go deeper. You must not just give ultimately just shallow content, you must demonstrate there is depth there. Does that make sense? But equally, you do not want to go too deep when you're actually presenting, but you have to demonstrate the depth is there because that's ultimately what they're buying into. They're buying into the implementation of your ideas, your strategy, your process, your method, whatever it is that you have, they're buying into that over a period of time. And finally, invite. You must be able to invite people to do business with you. You can't go all wonky and weird when it comes to the money. That is the moment where you've got to demonstrate even more congruency and even more certainty. But more importantly, you have to design the whole presentation where that is what happens at some point. Now, Ultimately, that means don't just do the sale at the end. The sale needs to be pretty much all the way through. All right, so to instruct your audience, you'll need to put together something called a unique branded solution. Just think about that word. Unique, that means it's one of a kind. Branded, it means it has a brand name. And solution, meaning it is a solution to a problem or indeed series of problems. Let's take a look at some well-known examples. Here we are, Stephen Covey and his seven habits of highly effective people. We wouldn't be talking about him if he didn't have this model or framework. It's the backbone of the book. It's the backbone of courses, mentorship programs, and coaching. And in essence, there are people around the world that pay Stephen Covey a fee each year to maintain the rights to teach the seven habits of highly effective people. So he's essentially created an asset there, hasn't he? An intellectual property asset. So where is yours? For most people, it's sitting in your head and therefore it's not making you any money. And also, it doesn't make it easy to sell what you do if you're just explaining in words something you should be showing in pictures and images. All right, let's take a look at another well-known example, smart goals. Well, you might argue it's not the best goal setting system. Well, potentially, but it is the most well-known because it's in a unique branded solution format because it's memorable because the smartest thing about it is it spells the word smart.
All right, what else? Robert Kiyosaki, Cash Flow Quadrant. This spawned the books, the courses, the mastermind programs, the one-to-ones, etc., all based around a simple principle, which is called the Cash Flow Quadrant. Let's go back in time. Abraham Maslow, Hierarchy of Needs. As soon as I say Hierarchy of Needs, you probably think triangle in the first place, don't you? So it's been happening for a long time. We need these. Without these, it's very difficult to explain what you do. So let's now look at an example, one of our clients. I love this one. It's Danny and Tamara, the Bump Birth and Baby Blueprint. They help couples to have a more natural birthing experience, but it's now all branded. They can demonstrate to potential clients what their service does. They can go into some detail, but this is also now something they can teach others other midwives how to implement. In fact, they even have it as a franchise model now as well. All right, back to our main model. Impact is next. You need the stress-free speaker system. You can see there are six core competencies that ultimately you need to master to have that stage presence and to be able to perform in such a way that you are performing at your peak every single time that you speak. Just a few examples of things that you'll definitely want to be getting even better at. State management, how to manage your emotional state. You want to be on par every single time. You don't want to be inconsistent. So you need to learn how to manage energy, manage your emotional state. That's very important. Gestures, of course, this is really important. They accentuate the message. You actually can see me demonstrating what's called the soft warrior there in that particular image. Vocal variety, you can see me using that here. My voice is often and very uh, clearly changing. Uh, at various times, pace and also speed and emphasis on different words. This is something I have learned how to do and something you will need to learn to do also. And eye contact. Uh, we're not using that obviously here because this is uh, a web class. However, on stage or in person, how do you create eye contact? What do you do with that eye contact? Most people have what I call aerosol eyes. Aerosol eyes means you're spreading your eye cot and spraying everywhere. That is a complete mistake. You actually want to do the opposite of that. All right, inspire. Storytelling, the bedrock of any great presentation or any great speech will always include incredible stories. However, we have lost this ability. We used to hear stories all the time in years gone by. Um, you know, years, years and years ago, of course, we would have had that around campfires, of course, and the elders would tell stories that would ultimately help pass on wisdom. And uh, later on, it would be your grandfather. But we don't really do that now. We've got other things, you know, TV and stuff that creates uh, and keeps attention. So storytelling is something incredibly important, but most people have lost the skill. Now, a, a, we call it a tri-summit storytelling system. Love to teach you this. Ultimately, a tri-summit is a story that has three summits. That is the problem, the journey, and the transformation. Now, there are three big acts you must create. Whether the story is two minutes, three minutes, or indeed 10 minutes, or even longer, it needs to be broken up into those three separate acts. But you have to know how to create those acts, but you also need to learn how to speak and perform those acts as well. Now, there are actually 15 different beat changes in every movie. Now, a beat change means a change in pace or a change in the story's direction. And ultimately, not knowing those is costing you because you'll use uh, these types of stories for case study stories. You'll also use them for a personal story where ultimately you position yourself and your journey to how you got to where you are today. It's kind of what I did earlier today when I did the Tony Robbins story. Does that make sense? So you need to learn how to do this. It's very important. Otherwise, you're leaving definitely some money on the table. All right, implement. Remember, this is our deep dive where we show the depth of our experience, but we've got to also do it in a way once we start really teaching, we've got to do it in a way that keeps the audience alive. We don't ever want to go into lecture-based. So how do we avoid that? Here's how we do it. There's some little techniques you'll want to learn. They're called primers. Primers are things you say deliberately that get the audience to pay attention. Uh, association, you've got to use metaphor and association and also techniques that get people to link one piece of learning to another, ultimately linking the unknown, your new content, to the known. That gives people what we call an aha moment, which is where the neurons fire up together and there's a feeling of certainty attached to your ideas 
but also to you. Then you've got metaphors. Obviously, that's a special type of story. Rhetorical questions. What's a rhetorical question? Well, I just did one. It's a question you ask, then you answer. Most people don't do that in a presentation. They just go statement, 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 and put the audience to sleep. Movement. How do you move around the stage? That's also crucially important. All right, let's get on to invite. All right, so we want to teach you something that I've been teaching for many years now. It's called the Pitch and Grow Rich Formula. It's a presentation structure that goes right the way through your entire presentation and includes techniques like seeding, yes sets, case studies, and offer, call to action, and loads of other stuff as well. So the question is, do you currently have a presentation that is very good at getting you new business. And, and are you looking to improve your status in the marketplace? In fact, do you want to become an even more recognized authority in niche? Do you want business to start coming to you rather than you always having to go out to it? So in a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity, an opportunity to get a 100% free business breakthrough call. My team and I have set aside the next four days to help you get this nailed. On the call, we show you how to reach your target market. We'll help you to plan out a presentation that will win you new clients and how to position yourself in a way that gets you paid what you are really worth. Now, the business breakthrough call is 100% free of any charge. At the end of the call, we will send you a step-by-step -step guide on how to put your offer together. This is called the Pitch and Grow Rich Formula. It's the same formula Sally used to make 800,000 from just one presentation. There is no charge for this, it's yours to keep. It shows you specifically when to sell in your presentation, how to construct the pitch in a way that feels comfortable and easy. And for complete transparency, the reason we're doing this for free is because, well, <laughs> at some stage in your journey, you may still want to hire me or a member of my team to help you with the further development or delivery of your serve and sell presentation. Or, well, you might want to join our Professional Speakers Academy and become an award-winning speaker. And if so, you can ask us about how that works at the end of the business breakthrough call, but you don't have to buy anything at all. In fact, I encourage you to have a pad and several pens with you as we want you to take notes, as we want you to implement what we share with you and see what difference it makes to your next presentation. So with that said, I'll now explain how to book yours. You'll see I have just added a link to book your business breakthrough call. Uh, depending if you are watching this on a smartphone or a laptop, you'll see it either below or to the side of this presentation. Uh, you can press that now or you can do it in a few moments. Once you find a time that suits you, you'll be asked to complete a short questionnaire. It's just a few questions just so we know a thing or two about you and the business you have now or of course wish to create. It helps us of course prepare for your business breakthrough call. Now, please note, if your type of business is not ideal for a serve and sell style presentation, we will let you know in advance. But safe to say, if you offer a service rather than a physical product, you'll likely be a good fit. Now, you should also be willing to charge a lot more for what you do. If you wanna keep your prices cheap and cheerful, then this is probably not gonna be for you. But instead, if you wanna charge expert fees, and get paid what you're really worth, then I do recommend you book the call right away as there is limited availability. Now, I know you may have reservations about booking this call. I'm sure you've, you know, you've probably put yourself into situations in the past that you probably wished you hadn't, and you may be worried about some kind of hard sell. Please, rest assured, we have no intention of doing that. It's not our style, and frankly, that approach does not work in today's modern world. What you can expect is a call from a world-class speaker who will show you how to put a presentation together that will get you clients in an easy, smooth, and almost effortless way. And in case you wanted any more proof, here's a small sample of business owners we've helped transform from a standing start. 
This is Caroline Sanderson, 110,000 in her first year using a serve and sell presentation we helped her craft and create. This is Blake Sargent, made 50,000 in his first month delivering his serve and sell presentation. This is Peter Marsden, we spoke about him earlier, 93,000 in his first year. Fiona Chalice, 85,000 in the first three months. Matthew Elwell, 101,000 in his first three months. Stephen Green, 1.5 million in his first year. Robert Rowley, 70,000, oh sorry, beg your pardon, 700,000 in the first 12 months. Manish, we looked at him earlier, 1.2 million within a year. Sally Lawson, 600,000 in her first year. As you know, she's now even done 800,000 in, in just one presentation. So she's in the multi-millions now. Jesson James, 1.2 million in his first year. Nick James, 15 million. Now, look, <laughs> you don't have to want to make millions if you just want to have a business that pays you, say, around 10,000 a month. No problem. We can show you how to have that kind of income within just a few months. So look, now is the time to tap that link, book a business breakthrough call and complete out our online questionnaire. It takes about three minutes to book yourself the call and complete the questionnaire. And the business breakthrough call itself will be around 45 to 60 minutes. And I promise it will be a game changing experience not just for your business, but I'm guessing also for you personally. Again, please be rest assured there's no hard sell on this call, but if you do want to know about our courses, please be sure to ask. Okay, so with that said, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So go ahead right now and book your business breakthrough call. Tap or click the link and we look forward to meeting you, albeit virtually. Until we speak personally, we wish you all the wealth, health and happiness in the world. So go ahead right now, tap or click the link and get that business breakthrough call booked in. See you soon.